In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to do the logic for multiple button combinations. As you can see, if I press L2, it will take me into this on state. And if I press triangle, 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 it will produce a light. However, if I'm not in this on state and I press triangle, 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 it's not going to make a light. Only whenever I'm in this on state can I do it. Uh, I have also made another two sequences of square x square that will make another light and circle, square, triangle, that will make um, a third light. Now I'm using lights because they're easy to convey and test my logic with, but they can be replaced with anything you like, such as animations, certain keyframes, sounds, anything you need. Okay, to start off, we're gonna be using a, the almighty microchip, and inside it, we're gonna be needing a few things. A controller sensor that's gonna be set to remote controllable, uh, six nodes, a selector, and a timer. Now we're going to attach four of these face buttons on the controller sensor onto four of the nodes, along with L2 with its own node. Then attach the wire coming from the L2 node into the B input of the selector. Oh, and also label all of the nodes that the controller sensor is attached to, just so we can keep track of things. Now, since the L2 trigger is pressure sensitive, it would only give you a full signal if you press down hard enough. And so I used the signal manipulator in between the L2 node and the selector. And I went into the custom remapper section and I decreased the input threshold down to 0.01. .01 and below that, changed the remap curve to clamp values. So now whenever a signal that goes into the manipulator is 0.01 .01 or greater, it would give you a signal of one which you can see on the second half of that signal manipulator. Okay, so, now, so next we're going to uh, be putting a wire from the B output of the selector into the sixth node and, in, and also into the start timer input of the timer. And in, the t in that timer, um, we're going to go into the tweak menu and attach a wire from the timer finished output into the in A input of the selector. So now when we press L2, that would change the selector from A to B, which would then start the timer for five seconds. And after five seconds finishes, it will change the selector back to A, or what we could call like our default state. And for B, I'm, I'm gonna call that combo state, since that's the state we need to be on in order to do our button combinations. And I'll label that six node combo state is on. So next we're gonna get a, another microchip and label it button inputs. And inside this microchip, we're going to uh, put the four nodes that the four face buttons are attached to. And also, we're going to size the microchip pretty big. So the general idea is that we're going to give a specific value to each of these four face buttons that will then send the, that value, when you press it down, send the value into a variable modifier. And that variable modifier will send the values into a variable where it will then be attached to an equals calculator where it will equal a number on the variable, where it will be allowed to send the signal or turn on the light in our case. And you'll start to get the idea as we move on. But before we do that, um, I forgot to attach a wire from the combo state node into the button input microchip so that whenever we are in this B state, we are, we are allowed to press the phrase buttons. And if we're not in that state or our default state, uh, we wouldn't be able to press them. Okay, to start off, we're going to give a specific value for each of our nodes. And to do that, we're going to use a value slider and create four of them for each node. And from that no from those nodes, we're going to attach a wire to the power input section of their own value sliders, as you can see. Going from top to bottom, I'm going to be giving the triangle button a value of 1, the square button a value of 10, the circle button a value of 100 and the X or the cross button a value of 1000. Now we chose these four values because since we're going to be using a series of three of these four face buttons and adding them together, it will be easy to add. And also these four fit, these four numbers are far apart from one another so that when we add them, each button sequence we will be using will have a unique value from any other button sequence we use. Oh, and um, go ahead and clone the combo state is all node and into the button input microchip. 
So now go get a variable modifier and a variable gadget. And um, in the variable modifier, we're going to set the operation type to add. And in the variable, uh, we're going to rename it combo value. Now going back to the variable modifier, we can set the name to combo value. So now we can modify the combo value variable. Open up the tweak menu of the variable and then um, set the maximum value to 3000. And the reason we do that is because we're going to be using a sequence of three of the phase buttons and adding them together. The maximum value that we're going to get is going to be 3000. And so after that, um, attach a wire from the value of the of each of the value sliders into the variable modifier of the, op the called operation value and also into the power of that variable. Do that with all the value sliders. And so now whenever that combo state is on and we press one of the phase buttons, that will add into that uh, variable. And then whenever it's off, we can't, we can't add to that variable. So now we're going to work on uh, resetting that variable. So get so clone that same uh, variable modifier and also place a timer and a counter. And from the combo state is on node, attach a wire to the increase count of the counter. And from the counter full of that counter, attach a wire to the start timer of that timer. From the timer, um, attach a wire from the timer finished output into the power of the variable modifier that we cloned and go into the tweak menu and uh, set it to reset. Now in that timer tweak menu, um, also set it to reset itself and also to reset the counter. So now whenever uh, that timer finishes, it will reset the variable. Uh, one thing I noticed is that if you leave the target time of this timer to five seconds, sometimes it wouldn't reset the, the variable um, that's because it also turns off as the combo state timer turns off because that timer is at five seconds as well. So I just reduced this timer to uh, 4.8 seconds. So it would reset the variable to zero before it turns off, before the combo state timer turns it off. But now since we have like a 0.2 second window um, where we can press face buttons, like you'll see like the variable turns to 20. Um, and we don't want that. We don't. We want to start the variable at, at zero. So to fix that, basically, I um, just got a signal manipulator, and I set it to pulse, and I attached the combo state node into into that signal manipulator, and then I attached that to the to uh, the reset variable modifier. So now, whenever we start the combo state, it would reset the combo value to zero. Okay. So next, we're gonna get a microchip, and inside of it, we're gonna place a node. And attach the combo value variable inside of that node and label the node combo value. Then we're going to get uh, three more microchips and these microchips are going to be our, our multiple button sequences. And we should start labeling like these microchips too. I don't think I labeled it when I was recording. The first microchip I'm going to use the sequence circle x square and I'm going to get a calculator and set it to equals. And so now we're going to just add up our face values of this first multiple button sequence, which is a uh, circle is going to be 100, square is 10, x is 1,000. So if you add that together, it's going to be uh, 1,110. And so next we're going to uh, attach a wire coming from the combo value node into the A input of this, of this equals calculator and then updating the B value to 1,110. All right, so next we're gonna get a counter and then attach a wire from the equals calculator to that counter. And that counter will power on a timeline, which can be replaced with whatever gadget you want, but I'm gonna use the timeline for this tutorial. Um, adjusting the settings of that timeline, um, I put it to play once and on end would reset the counter. I then decreased it to two seconds and then placed the light inside of it. Uh, right here, I'm just basically moving the light and then adjusting the color to orange. And so whenever we press L2 followed by circle X square, we make our light. And so I did the same thing with the other microchips. Um, I deleted the, the empty ones and then I 
uh, clone the first one so it retains all of the logic inside of it and the, along with the wiring. And so I did the same thing as I did in the first uh, sequence. The second microchip, I labeled it triangle, triangle, triangle. That will be our second sequence. So that will give us a total of three, which I put in the B um, section of the equals calculator. And I attached the wire from the combo value node to the A port of that calculator. And I did the same thing with the, with the third microchip. Um, in that sequence, we called it uh, circle, square, circle. And that will give us a total value of 210. All right, so now our sequences are completed. And right here, I'm just going to be adjusting the colors and the positions of the lights. So I'm just going to skip on a little bit. And right here, when we press L2, triangle, 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 we get a green light. And if you press circle X square, we're going to get a purple light. But I found a major issue with the logic. Um, if you notice, the first sequence is circle X square. But if I press circle square X, I'm still going to get my orange light that we don't want. And that makes sense because even though I'm not pressing the right sequence, I'm still getting a value of 1110. Uh, and that's a major issue. But I found a way to uh, fix it involving a bunch of gadgets. So place down a microchip and within it, uh, get two calculators and set it to equals. We're going to get two count counters and one AND gate. And before we start adjusting it, um, go back to the button inputs microchip and place a counter on the top left corner and attach the four face button nodes to the increase count input and change the target value to three. And then we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna clone our signal manipulator on the bottom and put it right next to that counter and attach the combo state is on node into the input section and change the pulse shape to 0.5 seconds and attach it to the reset uh, count of the counter. So now the face buttons will increase the counter and when we start this combo state, it's going to uh, reset it to zero. So I now get a node and place it above this variable and change the create port to no port and attach a wire coming from this counter into that node and clone that node and we're going to rename that node uh, count progress which I should have labeled this uh, microchip but I didn't um, right here I'm just going to be you know creating an icon for it as long as for this combo value node which you don't have to do um, so I'm going to get another node and this is going to be a reset timer node so I'm going to place it in this timer and attach a wire from the timer finish signal into that give it an icon, clone it, and place it into that microchip. And I'm just going to be attaching the wires from the nodes into their, uh, from the other nodes, so it just follows the signal. So now going back to our uh, first major issue, the first button that we're going to press in this first sequence is going to be a circle, which will have a value of 100. And I'm going to place that value in the first equals calculator in the B section, and attach that equals calculator into this counter and attach a wire coming from the combo value node into the uh, A input of that first equals calculator. And then for our second equals calculator, that would represent um, the number of times we pressed a button or our count progress node. So I'm going to attach a wire coming from that node. And to determine the B value, we need to know how what will be the number when one out of three buttons are pressed when two out of three buttons are pressed and when three out of three buttons are pressed. So the first number will, is gonna be one divided by three or 0.33. And then I'm just testing it out right here. When I press one button, it's uh, 0.33. When I press two buttons, it's gonna have a value of 0.67. And when I have three buttons pressed out of three, will give us a value of 1.00. So, so keep those numbers in mind. Uh, for this first number uh, will be 0.33 which is one out of three buttons pressed. And then I'm gonna attach that equals calculator into this counter and uh, attach a wire from both of these counters into this AND gate. And that would be our, the criteria for the first uh, phase button pressed in the sequence. And so we're gonna do this two more times. So basically just copy and paste these gadgets and put it uh, below it. And these wires were going to be attached to each other, but the difference is we're going to attach 
this first AND gate into the second AND gate. So when this first AND gate, for, so when the criteria for the first AND gate is met, it would allow us to go into the second AND gate. And so uh, the second phase value is going to be an X, which will have a value of 1,000. And so we're just going to update this number, uh, adding 1,000 into, into this calculator. So it's going to be 1,100. And then we're going to attach a combo value node uh, into that first uh, equals calculator. And then for the second one, we'll, we will attach the count progress node. And we're going to update that number to 0.67, which is 2 out of 3 buttons pressed, 2 divided by 3, 0.67 if you round it. And then I'm just going to be um, resetting these counters. And the second criteria will be met for the second face button. And so we just move on to the third one, the final one, and we just copy and paste the gadgets. And then we're going to attach that second AND gate into the third one. And then we're going to uh, attach the wires coming from the combo value node into that first equals calculator, and then um, count progress node into the second equals calculator. And just adjusting the numbers. Um, so the first equals calculator is going to, we're going to add 10 into that value, which is because uh, our third number is going to be, our third phase button is, is the square, which has a value of 10. And then three out of three buttons are pressed which is uh, 3 divided by 3, uh, which is 1. And we're going to update the second equals calculator to 1. And so we finished our criteria for uh, having a specific order of a sequence. So that AND gate, the last AND gate, will be attached to this equals calculator the power section of the power it will turn it on when that criteria is met and then that equals calculator will then turn on our light or our timeline all right so one last thing to add is going to be a way to reset the counters so i'm going to get this node and i'm going to label it relabel it reset counters when time finished i mean you can name it whatever you like i do mine is very literal um, and then I'm going to clone that node into this microchip, attach the, wire with, attach the wire with it, and then attach a wire coming from that node to each of the reset count inputs of all of the counters. So now it resets the variable as well as reset the counters whenever that time finishes. And this is the correct sequence, the so circle x square. And then I'm going to do square x circle, and now it does not generate the light. And doing any other sequence other than circle x square would not generate the light. And so basically, I'm just going to do the same thing for this sequence, the circle uh, square circle. I'm going to copy the microchip that we that we made with all the wiring, and then attach that AND gate to the equals um, uh, to the equals calculator to turn it on. Basically, just doing the same wiring as we did in the first sequence. And then now I'm just going to attach each of the three nodes into their respective area. The count progress, I mean, the combo value node goes to the first equals calculator of each section of each set. Um, the count progress node goes to the um, second equals calculator of each uh, set. And then the reset timer uh, node goes to that, its own uh, reset timer node. And then um, I'm just going to be updating each of the values. And that's pretty much it. So now I'll just do the correct sequence first. Just circle, square, circle. And then for this next one, um, I did circle, square, X, which it wouldn't have worked regardless. But uh, basically, if you did like something like a circle, circle, square, it would not work now, thanks to the logic. All right, so next thing we're going to be doing is making this button sequence a one shot. Basically, like if you notice, when I turn on the combo state and I input a correct sequence, this variable gadget is still on, which will then like allow me to do another sequence within that within the time. Um, and I don't want that. I just basically want to turn on the combo state, input a correct uh, sequence, and then it will turn off until it resets. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. 
Um, so go into the each of the timelines of the button sequences and place a not gate right under the light. And what this not gate does is that when this timeline turns on, when it's on, um, it would send out a signal. The not gate would send out a signal of one. Um, if it's not like connected into anything in the input section, then it's going to send out a signal of one. And that's what we're going to do to turn on our uh, variable uh, variable gadget. And so I'm going to get a node and then uh, label it combo is successful because when this timeline is on, that means we have a correct button sequence. And I'm going to attach the not gate into the uh, into that node. And then I'm, I'm going to be doing the same thing with the other two button sequences. I'm just placing a not gate and then attaching it to that combo is successful node. And so next, we're going to clone this node into the uh, button inputs microchip and attach a wire from the original node to the clone node. And from the clone node, uh, attach it to the power port of the variable gadget. But now we reach like a paradox because uh, what our logic is saying is only when the combo is successful can that variable gadget turn on. Um, but we can't get a successful combo because this variable gadget is off. So an easy solution to that is basically using a NOT gate and attaching a wire from the NOT gates that are in the timelines into the input section of this uh, NOT gate and attaching this uh, that NOT gate into the um, combo is successful node. So now our logic is saying is when the combo is not successful, it will turn on the variable gadget. And that's true for when um, our combo state turns on. And so it will turn off when the combo is successful, which is what we want. And then here's an example. I place the correct sequence and the variable gadget turns off. But if you notice, the variable gadget did turn on for a little bit. And that's because the timeline turned off before the combo state turned off. And so an easy fix for that is just making the timeline longer or just basically making it last as long as the combo state. Okay, so next what we're going to work on is the logic on uh, when we input a incorrect button sequence, it will reset the variable. So um, you're going to start off with an equals calculator and place it down in this microchip. And basically what I'm coming up with is a criteria on when to reset the variable. So I'm, I'm thinking when we press three face buttons and we have an incorrect combo value, uh, it would reset the variable. So I'm going to start it off with this equals calculator that you saw that I placed down. And I'm going, and I'm going to uh, attach this count progress node into the A port. And when we press three face buttons down, um, it would have a signal of one. So I'm going to put it uh, that B operand two value uh, equals to one. And so next I'm going to get a not gate, which you could clone right there. And I'm going to attach that equals calculator to the power port of that not gate. So it would only turn on when we press three face buttons. And what's going to go in this input value of the not gate is going to be the final value of each of the um, button sequences that we have. So for example, for this one, um, uh, it's going to be 1110. For the second sequence, it's going to be 210. And for the third sequence, it's going to be 3. And I'm going to attach each of those equals calculator into the uh, not, into the input port of the um, not gate. So it's basically saying when the values do not equal any of those uh, values, then it would pass a signal. And so next I'm going to get a signal manipulator and change the uh, rise to 0.5 seconds. And I'm going to attach that not gate. And I'm going to also attach it to a, a new node. And I'm going to label that combo is uh, incorrect or not successful. Uh, it's wrong. Combo is wrong. And so I'm going to clone that node and place it into this button input microchip. And I'm going to attach a wire to it. And so whenever that combo is wrong, that node will light up. And I'm and uh, the next step is going to be getting this AND gate. And so I'm going to set this criteria. So when the combo is wrong and the counter is full, or when 
we press down three face buttons, then that AND gate will pass the signal. And so uh, I'm going to get a couple more gadgets. I'm going to get this reset. Uh, I'm going to first relabel this variable modifier to reset variable. And then we're going to clone this variable modifier and place it right next to this AND gate. And in between those two uh, gadgets, we're going to place a signal manipulator. And then we're going to attach a wire from the uh, AND gate to the manipulator, from the manipulator to the modifier. And then the tweak menu of this manipulator, go to the remap remote section and change it to pulse on input on. And so now when the criteria is met of having three face buttons pressed down and having an incorrect combo value, the variable gadget will reset back to zero, as you can see right here. And so now that would, uh, if you have time, allow you to uh, press a correct button sequence. And now, they, now we have one more bug to fix, and that's if you press a correct button sequence right before the combo state ends, the light will turn on, but when you turn it on again, it would still play out because the timeline hasn't finished. And for an easy fix, you just got to place it outside the button microchip. So I just got a microchip, and I placed the counter and the timeline inside of it, uh, relabeled it, and I um, uh, placed it right outside. So I just took that microchip and placed it right outside the button, button input microchip. So now I do the um, combo again, right before the combo state ends. And it finishes the timeline, and it also does not uh, rest uh, continue the timeline when um, I restart the combo state. And so here I'm just doing the same stuff, uh, taking the timeline inside another microchip, and for this sequence, doing the same thing. Um, even though uh, it's going to leave the equals calculator by itself, um, I just leave it in uh, in its own microchip uh, just to like keep stuff organized. And then I'm just going to uh, rename this microchip to the triangle sequence. And once we have all the button sequences outside this button input microchip, uh, I'm just going to put all of those inside a uh, a new microchip, and then just call it like combos or something. And that is our final thing that we got to fix. And uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you when I see you.